Hello guys, Reza here. Welcome to another tutorial. In this one, I'm going to pick up where I left off in Substance Sampler Quick Start and I will show you how to take your reference photo into Substance Sampler, how to clean it up, how to add content to it, make it tileable and generate all the maps you need for your 3D application, all within Substance 3D Sampler. I have packed a lot of information for you, so let's get started. Now, the reason I'm putting together this tutorial is because I'm in the process of modeling a bonsai plant and I have already modeled the pot in Maya and I was thinking I could use Substance Sampler to create maps for the decorative pebbles. While I can just browse on the net for reference, uh, I happen to actually have one bag of pebbles at home and in situation like this, it's much better to create your own textures as it gives you a lot of freedom uh, to start with and to polish the end result of course so i took my camera took the bag and went to my backyard i actually have the um, photo of that right here so you know i didn't need a wide area as my coverage so it was easy to just put some pebbles on a flat surface and uh, to get to work now when you take a photo uh, mainly for the purpose of textures, you need to make sure that the camera is set properly. While a shot like this with bokeh and depth of field and the back to background looks gorgeous, it's actually not the right settings if you want to um, take a photo of uh, a piece so it could be used as a texture. For example, um, this is a failed attempt simply because I forgot to change my aperture. I, well, you know, my aperture was still set to 1.8 and because of that, I've got uh, crystal clear sharp areas and I've got some blurry areas around the corner. So you need to make sure to increase your aperture and remove um, any sort of shallow depth of field that you experience in your photo. In terms of the camera that I used, uh, I used R6, that's the camera that I use, uh, and I had um, a Nifty 50 uh, Prime on it, and uh, f1.8, which is great. I mean, you lower the, the aperture size and you get beautiful depth of field, but again, if you are doing this to create texture, then you probably don't want to use 1.8 or 1.2 or whatever low aperture size you have. So, um, that's something to be mindful of and again you need to think about the lighting as well because although you can delight some of your uh, textures after the fact um, if you have really harsh shadows it makes the uh, photography difficult so make sure you have an overcast sort of cloudy looking um, environment to make the job easier for yourself when you polish your photo um, I ended up taking this photo as my starting point. Um, the problem with that though is there is no way for me to tile this because there's just so much detail in here that it's literally impossible for me to do it manually. So again, for that part also, uh, I'm relying on 3D uh, sampler to get the job done for me. And it's just absolutely amazing how simple those tedious tasks are in 3D Sampler, which we will get to that in a second. So let's uh, get to work and let's see how we can turn this image into a smart material and to generate all the maps out of it so I can just bring everything into Maya and finish my model. All right, here I am inside Adobe Substance 3D Sampler. I did a quick window reset to default layout, so my layout matches yours. And I'm going to also put the image on my Patreon page in case if you want to download it and just follow along with this tutorial step by step exactly. 
So in the quick start guide, the video that I produced a while ago, I showed you how to put together your um, network via assets. Either you bring your own asset or you use a starter pack asset uh, from Substance 3D Sampler. Now, in this video, we're going to approach this slightly differently. We are going to actually bring our own image in here and start building up the content and adding the content and modifying it, polishing it and getting it ready to be exported. Now, it's very easy actually to bring your image in. You just simply drag uh, from the Window Explorer into this area, into Layers area and let go of the mouse. And first things first, this is the like a window that you get every time you bring in an image. Uh, and you've got few options to work with. 90% of the time, you just want to go with image to material. And it's a kind of artificial intelligence algorithm that allows um, the application to generate height map and normal map based off of your color map. So kind of this algorithm tries to figure out all the shadows and, and highlights and just extract the albedo. And this is gold, simply because, as I said in the kind of previous chapter, sometimes you get shadows that come with your color map and getting rid of those shadows can be very difficult. This algorithm is going to actually delight your color map or your albedo map, which is fantastic. The only problem with this is it's got limitation in terms of computation. So at least for this very version, only NVIDIA GPUs are compatible with this. And if you're using AMD GPU, then you're better off using B2M algorithm. But I use NVIDIA for my own machine, so I will have no problem using AI powered. With that said, go OK and we instantly get three layers in here. Now let's explore what these layers are and what we just did. Now these layers get added every time you bring an image into Substance Sampler. The first one is the base material. If I click on it and bring the properties a little bit higher, you can see we have access to all the kind of natural attributes that you get in any base material, including base color, how glossy or rough the content is going to be. Is that going to be dielectric or uh, conductive? Do we have any opacity on it? Is there any ambient occlusion on it? And you can, for every single one of them, you can customize them. You can actually go in here, pick the uh, color picker and pick a color if you want, or you can actually tick this box and click on this base color and actually import an image if you want. So that option is also available to you. That's the first layer. The second layer is your image. And from that, you get this very useful image to material filter. And this filter actually allows to generate a high quality PBR material from a single albedo image, which is amazing. If I go in here, make sure you have that uh, 2D viewport enabled, you have all of a sudden not only your albedo, but also your normal, high quality normal, and your roughness map. Of course, if there's any conductive content, you can add that into metallic as well. Right now, we don't have it. And height map. And this is a power that you actually get from that AI powered algorithm, the one that we picked right before we bring this image into this platform. So this is fantastic. We are already off to a very good start. Uh, let's take our time and go through some of the attributes of these three layers before we actually start adding content to what we already have. So I'm going to start with the base color again. Um, look at tons of references. Think about, all right, why I'm adding this and why I'm adding that. If you think this needs to be glossy, you to bring down the glossiness, that's fine. But make sure your reference backs it up. Or if you have it right in front of you, in my case, I actually did. Make sure you know what's going on. 
Um, for the most part, you actually don't want to touch these two. Uh, there are so many filters and generators that you can add to change the attribute of these guys. You can also make use of some of these presets. For example, if the content that you're bringing in is metal, it's a no-brainer. You switch to base material for metal and then you start with what you want to start with. We have a few kind of base material, one for vegetation, one for wood, one for fabric, one for brick, and one just a neutral base material. I'm actually gonna go with the one with concrete here because I think that kind of works slightly better um, with the case that I have as opposed to just normal base material with all the kind of um, very well defined highlights that I have on the base material. So that's one minor change I would like to make here. Uh, as for this image, uh, there's not much really I want to do in here. I already have my image. It's a node. You barely touch that. And then you go to image to input material. And that is a very, very useful uh, tool. So basically when it comes to filter, and this is something that I didn't get the chance to talk about in the quick start. Obviously, we had only 40 minutes to talk about the user interface and the workflow, but now it's time to actually dive in a little bit deeper. When it comes to filters, we have three main categories. We have um, generator filter and those generator filters generate stuff. For example, we generated a pavement in the previous video. So pavement filter is a generator and we have adjustment filter. For example, we used uh, hue or contrast or brightness and that's an adjustment filter. And this one right here is a tool filter. It adds a functionality to a, a current layer, something that we just didn't have with basic parameters and advanced parameters. Now, if I go in here, I can actually switch to normal to see things better. I can actually zoom in and I have a chance to change details on the geometry. I can change detail. I can even go in here and increase the resolution just a tad. I can zoom in. You can see that it's little bit pixelated. I have uh, the opportunity to change a macro detail. So I can just go in here and add more pores and detail onto my macro detail so we can see we have a slight touch of noise on every single pebble the medium detail basically targets the mainly the main edges of the bigger components and of course the large detail raises the area like you would um, in a, any any normal map or even a, in a height map speaking of which if i want to tweak the large detail. I have a tendency to go in here in my um, height map and only then change that a little bit. So you can see you can go really overboard with it. I think my macro detail is way too high. So I'm just going to bring it down. Medium detail is a bit high. I'm going to bring it down. Large detail you can actually increase a little bit, at least in this case. We can invert it doesn't make any sense for this example, but you can do that. Um, geometry equalizer is a very useful uh, slider, but we actually have a filter that does that. In case you're wondering what equalizer is, it actually uh, unifies all the highlights, makes it uh, makes your albedo pass um, a, a flatter uh, sort of a look which is actually a good thing because again you don't want to have a super high contrast area and super low contrast area shadowy area and bright area in your albedo pass because as soon as you tile it everyone's going to notice it right so flattening the the tone of your albedo pass is a very good thing you can do it in here but again we have a filter we are going to use that filter and a very cool slider is well apart from ambient occlusion that you can actually intensify or de-intensify uh, you can delight your intensity so just so you know um, if i go and in decrease my delighting intensity i'm getting the original albedo with all the shadows and this is what 3D Sampler does. So without, with, without, with. Pretty cool. Um, I have a tendency to kind of bring it down just a tad so it's not too flat. At the same time, I definitely don't want to have um, those thick shadows on my albedo. So 
that's definitely a good start just to see things better i'm going to bring down my tiling to three so i kind of see what's happening better again if you kind of feel a bit lost don't know why and how things are working and i'm being a bit quick about this definitely make sure to check my a quick start to 3d sampler video as i go through all of these small bits and pieces in a very timely manner so that's that that looks good again uh shift right click just to make sure that i have my lighting set up correctly yep it's not too bad obviously the geometry is not ideal but i really don't care because at the end of the day all i want is the material not the shape or the primitive that i see Now let's start adding some uh, filters to improve on what we have. So basically what I have right now is very, very clean. And this is not something that you see when this, these pebbles are in a bonsai pot for too long, right? So first thing I need to do to be able to add anything to this pebble, I need to equalize it first. And this is something that I tend to do first. So equalize bring it over and instantly you can see that if i go in here and do before and after in this map you can see i have few kind of warm areas and few cool areas and it kind of really nicely unifies that for me i can even go to height uh, you can see that uh, even better with height you can see both height map and kind of base color map they're more uniform they look more uniform without losing too much detail and um, i really like this equalizer uh, or equalize filter rather to set the right base to start with i need to fix the tiling now there are two ways of tiling the image that you have i am going to show you both ways and uh, basically they work slightly uh, you know they, they work in a different way and um, if you find one doesn't work for you you can always switch to the other one so uh, these are tool filters they're not generator filters they're not adjustment filters um, so I'm gonna go in here the first one is it's called tiling as the name suggests it's try it tries to find an area where the tile takes place you can even go in here, show seam, enable it and see how smart this is to be able to find the edges. You can see the tiling happens here. So um, you have extra level of control over it as well. So I'm gonna go in here and change the threshold a little bit to make it even smarter. You can blur the area and you can smooth the area as well. So those lines are not as jagged. Now, if I go and turn off show seam, you can see that it is kind of visible. Now you look at it, but if you don't look at it to begin with, it's really hard to identify. So without show seam, with show seam, without show seam. So this tool is priceless if you have type of pattern in your texture and you have to tile it but you don't want people to notice it you don't want to create seams that would be a great tool for it and get we have tons of um sort of uh, attributes to play around with that's one of them uh, the other one is called actually make it tile i know it it sounds very similar so make it tile in my opinion, does a slightly better job um, compared to tiling. You can see that we have a sort of color equalizer that comes with this make it tile and it will have an impact on the area that just has been tiled. So I can go with, with without, with, without, with without in my opinion make it tile filter does a better job but again you would be the judge sometimes a uh, tiling filter works better than make it tile filter you make the call i thought it would be a good idea for you guys to know both of them 
I'm gonna go with make it tile and um, leave this one off. I don't need to delete it. And that's the good thing about this. You can just mute any of them that you don't want. At any point of time, you can go and change them and uh, kind of update your uh, layer tree. Also from experience that you know that the pebbles that I'm going for have a slight tint of warm color to it. Uh, so basically you can achieve that in two ways. You can apply a vibrance filter to it, which is an adjustment filter and crank up vi vibrance and it makes it uh, vibrant. This filter makes the colors more vivid. Uh, that's one way of doing it. Another one is to basically colorize it. So bring in a colorize filter and lower the intensity just a tad and you go in here and create a color that you want. So colorize and uh, vibrance both are good. I personally like the uh, kind of vividness of the colors in the vibrance. This is probably a bit too much. You can, if you want, um, bring in a little bit of uh, color bleed into your um, sort of composition and fine tune the coloration of the pebbles that you have. That's good. All right, we're making progress. Now, um, it's all good, but there's one problem. This is way too dense and sometimes um, at, at least in the references that I have seen, it's not just pebble. You have uh, dirt and grime in the middle of it. Sometimes you have water in here. Uh, sometimes you even have moss. If you don't maintain your bonsai and all of those bits and pieces can really enhance the look of your map. So what I can do and I, what I would like to do is to bring in a very useful filter to break up this pattern that I have. And that filter is called water. My One of my favorites by far, and it really changes the look of uh, my material. So obviously the level of the water is way too high. I can actually lower it down a little. I can zoom in so you guys kind of get to see what's going on here. I can just bring it up a little. So it's not just, you know, pebble, dry pebble. You can actually see a little bit of water in it, which is really good. Uh, I can increase the wetness if I want. Um, you can make it really muddy or less muddy if you want. I'm just going to definitely go with uh, kind of more muddy look. You can bring your own custom mask if you want and enable dirt on water is obviously something that I prefer uh, and it kind of removes some of the artifacts I might get. Actually, I can show you here if I zoom in without and with, you can see a little bit of artifact you get here and there and kind of gets fixed with this enable dirt to water. So um, definitely something that I really uh, like to kind of incorporate and you can see that it works beautifully uh, for me. You got to play around to see what works and what doesn't. As always, you always have extra layer of control through advanced parameter, which goes through kind of macro parameters for changing really fine details. I'm not going to go through that, obviously. But uh, if you're very picky about the look that you're trying to get, then definitely I suggest you to kind of dive a little bit deeper so you kind of match your reference exactly. So that looks really, really good. I'm actually quite happy with that. And uh, this is getting closer and closer to what I actually hope to get. Now, another thing that I really would like to improve on is my ambient occlusion. So if I go in here, and that happens a lot when you uh, have your color map ready, your normal looks good, your roughness map looks good, but your ambient occlusion, it's a bit um, faint, for lack of a better word. So in cases like this, I you can actually, if you are happy with your height map, you can convert your height map into ambient occlusion map 
uh, and that's a really really kind of nice technique to add a little bit of depth into your map uh, so and it's one of those things that you can kind of channel through Hypershade in Maya when you bring your map in or any software packages for that matter. I keep saying Maya, but it, it's applicable to any software packages, 3D software packages, obviously, if you have all the maps ready. So uh, observe what type of map needs attention and kind of focus on that. So in that case, I think I need to kind of slightly improve on my ambient occlusion map. So what I can do is to go and do height to AO and if you look at here actually I can switch to my ambient occlusion map you can actually increase the intensity now and get more depth into it so if you think you need a little bit intensity with your ambient occlusion you certainly can you can read that from your normal map the problem with that is it brings all the macro details with it as well and not a good idea it makes the whole map just too dark so from height i think would be a most uh, sort of suitable strategy but again you know strategies do vary based on what you have but at least in this case a um, little bit of intensity for my normal map is going to definitely work for me so i'm uh, actually quite happy with what i have and I just wanted to share the process with you that now this is ready to go. I can just go into share. I can go to export as. I can just bring this to Substance Painter as a, a smart material, even go to designer, bring it out as an EXR or even low dynamic image as JPEG. So you have a lot of freedom over the maps that you're generating obviously what we want is um, base color we don't want diffuse because i'm using arnold um, I, I need normal roughness um, height map i definitely want ambient occlusion i definitely want and for me that will suffice i even don't need opacity i may actually put together a tutorial on how to work with transmission objects but for now we're just going to leave it at that and then you name it so i'm just going to name it pebble and now once your path is set you can set the resolution 2k works for me i mean if you have a bigger area to cover the 4k can do but for just a bonsai pot unless that bonsai pot is ginormous you really don't need 4k 2k will do and then you go ahead and export it calculates everything, export all the maps, browse to your file, I can click in here. And if I bring my map, you can see I have all the maps in EXR ready to go, ready to be connected to my geometry. Now that's a quick look on how you turn your image into a material. I hope you use this um, tutorial in your own projects and to improve on your uh, shading and texturing workflow. Find me on Patreon and Twitter. Thank you very much for watching. Talk to you guys soon.